You gonna make somebody a co-host to help you out? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, Debbie Morrow, you're gonna be made co-host. Okay. Awesome, you guys. Well, welcome to today's legend uh, legends call. So yeah, so um, Debbie, I've just made you uh, the um, co-host. If you can help me out, that would be awesome. So. Welcome everybody to tonight's Legends Leadership Call. My name is Casey Eberhardt. If you and I don't know each other, we are uh, here each and every Monday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, where we gather all the affiliates that want to participate in growing their affiliate business here inside the Mailbox Power ecosystem. And we get together and we have a chat and we learn together and we explore new ideas on how to grow our affiliate income through the Mailbox Power system. If you and I don't know each other, let me just first say, nice to meet you and welcome to the party. We love having you here. And if you are new, this call changes each and every week. And we really are designed for us by us. And what I mean by that is I'm just a dude in the field, just like everybody else in, uh, on the call, uh, except the people that are not dudes and the dudettes um, and the amazing women we have in the organization as well. Um, we want to just welcome you. We're a big, happy family. And what I love so much about this community is that we are truly a community that lifts each other up, helps each other out, and helps explore different opportunities and ways to get our message out in front of folks. And so um, this, uh, this, morning, uh, this morning, we had a call on our wake-up call. And I wanted to kind of do the same exercise tonight that we did this morning but we're gonna spend a little bit less time on it. And then I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into it. So for those of you that weren't with us this morning, super cool, I'm gonna help you out here. For you, those of you that were with us this morning, if you have your notes, we might have you actually add uh, to that list. So here's the deal. Uh, over the weekend, I was um, at this little event and we had several Mailbox Power folks that were at this event. And there were several folks that had aha moments in making their um, business a little bit easier. And it really sort of kept me awake last night for quite a bit. And in fact, I had a long conversation this morning with Joe, um, our CEO, really about what transpired <laughs> over the weekend and also kind of on our, on our call this morning. So here's the deal. I'm going to start with this. Don't judge the inside of your book against somebody else's cover. Okay. And what that really means, at least from my perspective, is it means this. Um, I know there are people on this call right now that have a genius when talking about a particular topic, right? And I know that we've had a lot of conversation in Mailbox Power about the real estate profession, right? But here's the deal. If you've never sold real estate, you're not a realtor, you have no interest in real estate, don't try to go talk to a realtor about selling real estate. They're not going to get it. You or you, more importantly, are not going to get them, right? So here's what we did this morning. I'm going to invite you guys to do the same, and we'll have a couple of people share if you'd like, but here's the deal. What I'd like for you to do is down the left-hand side of a piece of paper. If you don't have a pen and a piece of paper, you can do this mentally if you want. If you got a post-it note, scrap paper, it doesn't really matter. Um, but here's the deal. On the left-hand side of the paper, um, I'd like you to write down things that if I handed you a microphone for with, you could go talk for 30 minutes on. Now, these could be things that you love, that they're passion hobbies of yours, Maybe you are in a job currently that you could talk about Medicare or health insurance or funeral expenses or veterinary services or dentists or chiropractor or taxes or cryptocurrency or um, book writing or Disneyland or apple farming or um, traveling or journaling or scrapbooking or a gazillion different things. I just want to kind of spark some of those ideas for you. So if you can think of some things that are um, in your wheelhouse, as they say, write those down the left-hand side of your, your page. If you're a speaker, maybe speaking or event planning or audiovisual equipment, um, maybe there's poker, blackjack, roulette, casinos, Las Vegas. You can tell where my head is tonight, right? Um, 
right? So we're going to write all those down on the left-hand side of the page. So I'll give you about five, 10 seconds to just jot down a couple of them. Okay, there you go, right? Now, on the right-hand side of your paper, so if you want to just draw a line, on the right-hand side of the paper, I'd like for you to write down some topics and some things that literally are of no interest, or you don't know anything about them, or you don't care about them, right? I'll give you a couple of mine. I used them this morning. Cars, don't get it. Don't understand what the big hoopla is about cars. Motorcycles, really don't get anything about cars. I don't get anything about motorcycles. Sports, don't understand why grown adults look at a television screen and scream at an inanimate object with a bunch of players they have nothing to do with running around in uniforms. Just don't get it. That is just me. I don't like books. The idea of sitting down and reading a book for me is so outside my scope. I have this amazing book right here that I'm, quote, reading, and this is how I read it. I open it up and I go, oh, page 180. I read a couple of sentences. I'm like, oh, I'm bored. I read my book for today. I hate it, right? Not a book reader. Don't understand or know anything about genealogy. Not a clue. My only, my only uh, tie to genealogy is through Helen Brahms, right? So I want you to write down um, uh, farming. Don't know anything about, well, I do actually know stuff about farming, but I'm not interested in it. Photography, not interested, don't know anything about it. There's photography going on downstairs in my house right now, all kinds of lighting equipment, all kinds of crap, no idea what's going on down there. So I am sequestered in my little box here, right? Now, here's the thing. I want to release you. I want to free you up. Don't go spend energy in trying to talk to people about mailbox power with people that are in those professions that are on the right-hand side of your piece of paper. So on the left-hand side of your piece of paper, on the top of all that list, write more. And on the right-hand side, less. Do more left, leave the rest. Oh, I just, I did that. That actually came out actually kind of good. I'm a poet and didn't know it, right? Do more left and leave the rest. Now, that doesn't mean that if Deborah Thorne comes to you and she is a speaker and you don't have any interest, you don't know anything about speaking, it doesn't mean don't talk to her. That's not what it means, right? But what it does mean is that if you are really into cooking, or I think Marie Benoit said this morning that she was into hydroponic farming, right? Or you're into, um, you know, uh, David was saying he uh, was interested in the mental health profession, right? What it does mean is that you will have a simpler, easier, more fun experience if you are talking to people that are already in your space about stuff that you think is fun and that you think is cool, right? Robert is a pastor, right? Um, uh, so there is a whole group of, there's a, there is a bazillion church pastors out there that they can swap stories with. I am not a pastor. I wouldn't know the language. I wouldn't know the first thing about being a pastor, right? Except from a marketing perspective. Right. I love using Gerilyn McDonald in this. I don't know if Gerilyn is on here or not, but but, you know, this morning I had a huge aha moment and it actually happened right on the call. And that was this. If I were going and talk uh, for those of you that don't know, Gerilyn McDonald owns a uh, ballroom dance studio in North Carolina. And I say that haphazardly because I always I'm 90 for 99 percent sure it's North Carolina. I think it's actually in Raleigh and I might have that on wrong but oh, Raleigh. it is Raleigh no it's Charlotte Charlotte I was so close so well I don't even actually know if I was close or not no you're not <laughs> right but here's the thing so Geraldine and I were talking this morning and this is a this would came out as a perfect example of what I'm talking about if I were going to go talk to a dance studio right I would say something like hey Joan I'd love to talk to you about what do you take how do you take care of your new dancers or your new customers or your new clients, right? That's the language that I would use based on knowing nothing about how the dance studio profession actually runs. And Geraldine and I were talking this morning. She's like, well, here's what I do. I was almost just trying to go into her um, accent and I can't do it. 
Um, but you know, one of the things that we do is I want to ask other dance students how they take care of their students. Me not knowing that they're actually called students puts me at a disadvantage, all things being held constant. If Geraldine and I are talking to a dance studio, she's gonna win the job every single time because she knows what they're actually called, right? Now, if you know nothing about running a veterinarian office, I grew up in a vet office. My dad was a veterinarian. I, 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 I have done more spay and neuters myself than I know what to do with. I have done so many, been in on so many surgeries. I understand the mechanisms and the levers that those offices run by. Somebody that's never had a pet, never been to a veterinarian, never had any experience with a vet, they might be able to talk to a vet, but all things being held constant, somebody with a little bit more experience or passion about that topic is gonna to do a little bit better, okay? So I just wanted to jump on, I want, first thing, so we've got two sections to do tonight. So that first section is that left side, right side. Curious if anybody would like to share some of the things that they came up with on their left-hand side or their right-hand side or both. Yes, Casey. Hey, David. Uh, okay. Uh, mental health, you already mentioned from me. Equal rights, tiny houses, Disney parks, of course, and small towns would be on my more side. Less so, side David, what did you, be... David, David, what did you say after tiny houses? Small towns. Okay. Um, on my left side would be real estate, insurance, cars, sports, and suburban sprawl. Although I can talk about that one because I hate it. Okay. So I might suggest that you talking to um, developers that plan massive neighborhoods, it's probably not going to be your best bet. Right. Especially when you say something like, I hate it, really means you're not going to be a very good sales rep in that environment. Right. And that's okay. Right. Um, but for example, um, something like tiny houses, right? If you get passionate about it and you want to talk about tiny houses, well, heck, um, there are so many Facebook groups about tiny houses. There are shows about tiny houses. There are entire associations about tiny houses. There are real estate investors that do nothing but go in and buy tiny houses and put them on lots and create Airbnb properties out of it. That's a great space to play. And I think you'll have a lot more fun and interesting conversation because you're actually interested in it. Right. Right. Equal rights. Same thing. There's a ton of different organizations that could, that I am sure are begging for folks to have conversations about how to help them either get their message out, bring people into the fold, thank donors, that type, that type of thing. So absolutely fantastic, uh, fantastic list. Um, anybody else? You just have to take yourself off mute. I am. <laughs> go ahead, Nanette. <laughs> Let's go, Nanette, and then tears up. So this is why I'm so stuck, is because, anyway, so veteran issues, legislative and local, veteran transitioning, interviewing, missile defense, military, paper crafting, and I know hundreds of techniques in paper crafting. Um, what is, and Nanette, I'm curious, because I've known you now for over a year, and that's the first time I've ever heard you say paper crafting. So is paper crafting different than origami? Yes. Well, origami would be a subset of paper crafting. Okay. So what is paper crafting? So it is, in my world, it's making handmade greeting cards. This is one I made and then I photographed it and it now we can personalize it. But making about 40,000 greeting cards by hand that we gave to nonprofit organizations and veterans. Um, English country dancing and um, contra dancing. English country dancing? What is, what is English? I, I'm learning more about you. I should have done this years ago. I'm learning more about you guys. <laughs> what is English country dancing? I think Jane Austen. Okay. Okay, that is the era of the dancing. And Geraldine will also probably tell you this. It is the forerunner of square dancing here in the United States. It okay. evolved from, 
France orig originally. Okay, awesome. I, I just, I, I know nothing about this other than to tell you that number one, you should talk to Bruce Waterman because Bruce actually photographs um, one of the largest square dancing collaborations where clubs from all over the country come and I don't know, they jump around and do si do and uh, do all of that stuff. So there are, I am sure, dance studios, places where those, uh, that you can have those conversations about the moves and the type of moves um, and the names of those moves, paper crafting, being able to create a club of paper crafters or associations where maybe um, we're gonna send them out a postcard with a paper crafting tip. Dean Hankey is actually developing little magic tricks that he's printing on cards that people cut out and they can fold them up and they can actually fold up the cards or the certificate or the things that come out of the document center to create little arts and crafts projects. And then he has the ability to take those and send those out to his potential customers, clients, people that are in his space because that lights him up, right? Um, country, English country dancing. And now, I'm gonna, now you've got me so sparked. Now I'm gonna have to go look up what that is, right? But look, you guys, Think about, like, I'm watching people say, oh, I'm into paper crafting. Oh, at Kimberly, Kimberly is like the paper crafter, like, like she's the queen of paper crafting, right? Do you understand that the three of you or the four of you that are into paper crafting could get together and probably brainstorm and come up with three or four different ways to use this service to talk to other paper crafters? Now, this is totally, totally off topic and a small tangent. Is paper crafting where you could create a poster out of construction paper, like you cut out individual pieces and then you put it on a, on a poster and make a big giant poster? You okay, could do so, that. Okay, so super nerdy me. Um, I have right over my wind, um, right over my computer right here, I have a, um, it is a Western Airlines Las Vegas paper crafting poster from back in the 50s. They had Neat. an entire series. It's amazing, it's gorgeous, right? So those are veterans, now we've talked about this, veterans have a huge um, need uh, to, feel, um, uh, to feel complete, especially when you come out of the service. Now I'm making an assumption here, and, and by the way, I should have put Nanette's left side is basically my right side. I know nothing about missile defense. I know nothing about veterans transitioning. I know nothing really about veterans other than I'm incredibly grateful that they are um, part of our um, apparatus here in the States. Um, I don't know anything about English country dancing, right? But that's what makes this so great. Think about how many people are into English country dancing that have never heard about Mailbox Power. Right. So where I think sometimes we get stuck is we're trying to actually talk to somebody else's left side of their paper, even though it's on our right side. Does that make sense, you guys? It's like, look at and Nanette. This is such a perfect example. She's saying stuff that I like. I have to think about even saying English country dancing. Right. But if I have on my left hand side oh my gosh, I love tech royalties in altcoins of cryptocurrency and buying and selling um, derivative options on a butterfly naked call spread, people would be like, what the heck is that dude talking about, right? But if Machen was on here, right? Machen and I could talk for hours on alt altcoins in the crypto space, right? I say this, that if we stay on our left side, we are, we're going to have an easier, an easier way of having those conversations because we can use it in our, in that process. Right. So let's, let's be bop over to tears. And then, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to circle back around. I'm going to put a button on this in a minute. Tears up. All right. So I wrote art books, sci-fi, anything futuristic technology. So my random interest in crypto is more on the future technology side, I could not have a decent conversation about crypto, except in a very conceptual sense, right? Um, um, one of my best friends is a massively successful 
author on a on a futuristic book series like she's amazing it's like they're like taken off all over the place um her pen name is pj manning okay and um if you remind me tears i'll send you links to her books if you like that if she is like the wickedest smartest person on futuristic marketing and her husband mm -hmm. it, they're really really close friends of mine her husband was the creator and executive producer of hercules and xena the two shows down in new zealand so it's kind of a juxtaposition, super like weirdo like that. So, okay, awesome. So anyways, tangent. So that's on your I never knew that. That's awesome. <laughs> but I never thought my interest in sci-fi would be of any use in this setting. So I'll give you an example. Um, when PJ does her book tours, I sometimes go with her to these little readings where she'll actually read a, read a few pages in front of a book club or in front of a thing. That place, those places are teeming with sci-fi nerds, like all over the place. And all they want to talk about is blah, 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 just stuff. I'm just like, um, <laughs> yeah, can I tell you how to beat the YouTube, YouTube algorithm? Right. And they all freak out. They're like, YouTube, that won't be here because of the super secret Sonic, blah, 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 blah. Right. I was just reading about a new flying car. It's exactly. being produced in Japan. I mean, Israel and Japan. It's like, how exactly. cool. Exactly. So go find the groups on Facebook that are all talking about that kind of stuff and inject yourself in that kind of conversation. That's where this gets fun, you guys. I say all of that, that not all of us need to go talk to and sell to realtors, right? And, and I see this happen all the time and then I'm gonna get off this and we're gonna, we're gonna move it a little bit. But here's the thing, you wanna know how to not sell something to a realtor? I'll give you the number one way to not sell something to a realtor. Call them a realtor. What are they called? They are called realtors. It's two syllables. If you call a realtor a realtor, they know that you don't know what you're talking about. It is, it is a it is, it is, it, it is the easiest sign that that you are not one of them. The only way I know this, by the way. Um, I'll, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, uh, I'll tell you the, the way I know this is I was actually speaking for a bunch of realtors and I kept calling them realtors and, uh, they actually pulled me off stage in the middle of a presentation. It's that powerful. And if you don't believe me, go ask one. I wish Rusty was on here because he would, he was the first one to tell you. Right. Um, and, um, Tirza, can you connect up with Donna? Uh, Donna's husband, who is a sci-fi writer and um, author, and he is an amazing, amazing, uh, amazing guy. So you guys will can you can just super nerd out together over there. Steve Bellinger, is that who yep. you're talking about? Yep. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. In fact, you guys could probably start a little sci-fi group together. Yeah, Latika, Latika, uh, Latika just said. Um, that she's a realtor. She did not write, I'm a real uh, tour. She wrote, I'm a realtor. Okay. Wow. So um, cool. So can you guys see how like, like lift the burden off yourself, even though you hear people talking about real estate agents and insurance agents, if that stuff is not of any interest to you, like I'd rather see you guys go talk about people that you play board games with or that you play, you know, um, like, um, um, Mary Kay Warren's on here. She's got two young, two young women, um, for daughters, right? How do moms interact with twins? Right. Oh my gosh. Star Tomlinson. I mean, she loves wine, right? So go, go start a conversation with people all about wine and then tie into that, how you can use mailbox power when the conversation comes, right? So let me give you, so I wanna move this. I wanna just ask anybody have any questions or thoughts or wanna add into this part of the conversation? Cause I just wanna kind of give the, another framework on how you can move this into the, um, uh, move this into the mailbox power conversation. Yeah, Sandy. Um, I found 11 things that I like better than real, real estate. Awesome, what are they? Hit me up. Oh, uh, BNI, genealogy, legislative pension policy, Sports books, wow. education, Legis legislative Legis educators. Huh? Legislative pension policy. Wow. I guarantee you that's on the right side of a lot of our papers. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> yeah. 
Now the irony, the irony <laughs> is I'm a total political nerd. I refuse to talk politics with anybody under any circumstance. I know. But I am the biggest political nerd. For me, politics is show business for ugly people. Like they got <laughs> all the drama, all the, it's awesome. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. No, that's okay. Uh, legislative issues for seniors, us particularly uh, staff that used to work for school districts who are, at, especially if they retired before 9-11, uh, technology, Star Wars, history, poetry. Awesome. So let me just hit in on a couple of those, right? Genealogy, like you and Helen should definitely connect up. She's a genealogist. You guys can nerd out about family trees all day long. I love it. Right? <laughs> and now, now you've got some camaraderie with somebody. So now you've got two of you that are nerding out about uh, genealogy. Now you can bring in a third and a fourth and a fifth and start having those conversations, right? Educators that are, are retired, I have, I have often said this. I believe at my core that educators are a group of people that would do so amazing in our business. And here's why. If you really look at the skill set of an educator, and um, yes, my mother was an educator. My mother was a high school principal and a planning principal and designed uh, high schools and blah, blah, blah. So I grew up in the education world and the veterinary world. So again, I could talk about educators till I'm blue in the face. Here's what a teacher develops a skill set at. Number one, influencing somebody that has no interest in listening to them. Number two, controlling a crowd. Number three, presenting. And number four, which I think is the most valuable skill set that a teacher has, is the ability to take some super complex topic like long division or fractions and teach them to a six-year-old. I love long division. Oh, yeah. I could do that all day. There you go. My <laughs> aunt could sit and you two could just nerd out over long division. She was a math teacher. Right, but, but you guys look at Sandy's face right now. Seriously, look at Sandy's face. She's like beaming, like she's so excited. She gets to let her inner nerd out, out. <laughs> right? We just unleashed her nerd. She's into Star Wars and legislative, whatever the hell she said, <laughs> right? But I guarantee you, Sandy, there are people just like you. We just have to go find them. Find them. <laughs> And you think all the people that are like super nerdy about Star Wars, you think they've ever experienced something like mailbox power? No. No. Vanessa Hunter's husband, by the way, is so nerdy in Star Wars. He literally has an entire room in his house dedicated to Star Wars. Wow. I have Her some friends from high school that participate in a troupe, much like people do Renaissance Fair. They yeah. get together and do <laughs> troupe reenactments. Uh, those are called LARPs. Hello. Um, and let me tell you, the only reason I know what LARP stands for is because I had employees at a company that they all would go on the weekends and LARP themselves silly. LARP stands for live action role play, in case anybody's curious. Now, um, I am really frightened of the fact that I actually know that. And um, <laughs> that scares me. Yes, David. Yeah, I have a question on this because... Our primary, our ideal client is a business person, correct? Our ideal client is somebody that gets what we have to offer and has four or 16 digits and an expiration date. So yes, I would say that for me, my ideal client is a business, right? Okay. But and one of the things... Uh, let's see, one of the things I'm thinking of is a lot of our interests and things that get us excited are hobbies. They're not business related so much. So, well, some let, me of them, not this, all of them. David, let me ask you this, David. Let me ask you this. Sandy, you're into Star Wars. Do you have to buy stuff to participate in the Star Wars ecosystem? Pretty much. If I wanted to buy more, I could. Yeah. So when you buy yeah. stuff, isn't aren't you buying stuff from a business? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So see, David, I'm just going to look at like, if you were into coffee shops, right? There are a bunch of businesses around coffee shop. Flamingos. I am, I, for whatever reason, I dig flamingos, right? I'm in a couple of flamingos group, flamingos Facebook group. We had an entire Christmas flamingo Christmas card exchange 
in a flamingos group, <laughs> right? So we ended up sending out hundreds of flamingo Christmas cards to each other. It was super goofy, but some of them, other people love businesses. So David, here's the thing. If I'm into um, into uh, Star Wars and Sandy's into Star Wars and we start talking about San Star Wars and it's a hobby, what is going to be a, what is going to be a, a question that comes up down the road? Oh, so what Probably do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Yeah, and it gives us the opening, but it gives us the camaraderie to have that conversation. Right. Right. right, David, I cannot imagine a scenario under which you are going to walk into a business cold and start talking about mailbox power. Got to be honest. Right. Don't see it. Right. right? But right. if you go and you're talking to a bunch of people around a campfire about tiny houses and you're roasting marshmallows out over a campfire talking about who has the smallest house, that at least gets you in that conversation. And, you know, I'm going to go back to Sandy. I watched her smile just beam when we started talking about legislation. <laughs> right? So it just gives us a way to connect with humans on a level that they're already interested in. Their defenses are down because they're not being sold something. So I think I was talking with Bonnie before we jumped on here. And she approached a speaker friend of hers. Now, Bonnie is not um, a speaker out on the circuit, right? But she approached a speaker and the speaker said, um, I'd love to catch up on the phone with you unless you're trying to sell me something, okay? So I just explained to Bonnie why she got that reaction. As a speaker, I will tell you that, um, um, and if I think I saw, uh, I think I saw Deborah Thorne on here. She will tell you the same thing. Um, at the end of the day, everybody wants to sell us stuff. And right. here's why, because they are told in some training, oh, they're influential. They have large networks. They're in front of people. Get them on board and they'll go blah, 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 blah. Right. However, when I go and I show a speaker and have a conversation with a speaker, we can swap war stories. Right. So because I can swap a war story with a speaker, We've got an instant camaraderie or an instant connection. I'm on the inside. Like, you know, she's a T and this is how T's are. T's have a million questions. T's do. They have, T's have a million questions, probably a million and one questions. I'm not going to tell you, I don't even know what a T is. But um, anyways, um, do you guys see that? I mean, it's, it's and I said this yeah. this morning, I said this this morning and um, I actually went back and looked and it's true. Uh, it's even more true than I thought. If I look at my, group of customers and affiliates that I've brought on since January 1. If I go back just four months and I look who I have brought on, almost all of them, I have something in combination, uh, I have something in common with. We're either speakers or we're coaches or business consultants or entrepreneurs in the sense of we're buying and selling businesses and strategies. Um, a couple of people bumbled their way in Right. A couple of people found me on YouTube and maybe heard me from other. But for the most part, um, you know, Deborah Thorne, Deborah Thorne and I can get on a Zoom and talk for hours about speaking. And I can go and I can talk to her and I go, hey, Deborah, you know, look, um, I work with this other speaker and we created a swag box. That swag box is what we send out to attendees of conferences. Now I've just connected with Deborah. Deborah goes, oh, my gosh, I want to do that, too. Now that's why those swag boxes are so powerful, right? For a veterinarian, you're not going to talk to them about a swag box. They're not even going to know what you're going to talk about. But you go into a veterinarian office and you say, hey, um, if you send out your uh, vaccine recall postcards, we've got a better way. They're actually free only 37 cents. So if you got to send out your rabies recalls, your DHLPP, and your Parvo vaccine recall notices, there'd be an easy way for you to do that. And personalized. And, pers and personalized, right? Hey, if you've got a new critter that comes in, and by the way, you'll notice um, the language that I use. When you have a new critter comes in, almost all veterinarian offices refer to pets as critters. Okay, so hey, if you've got a new critter come in, um, maybe you have a little welcome to the family puppy card. So, so this is how I would talk to a vet. That is, again, because I know the inside of this, right? I'd say, hey, doctor, um, look, here's the deal. Um, you almost every clinic has a clinic cat or a clinic dog or some sort of clinic, some sort of clinic animal. I say, why don't you make a card 
that comes from the clinic cat or from the clinic dog going to the new the new critter um, that comes in the new uh, so we had a clinic cat right so we made a car that came from our cat to a new cat that said hey come find me here's the hiding place where the dogs can't get you and let's all stare at them while they pee on the fire hydrant right outside and then we <laughs> send one to the dog but the dog one said catch me if you can you're never going to find me i'm too uh, i'm too nimble i've got nine lives and you're never going to find me but good luck trying and oh by the way Tell your mom that there's a fire hydrant right outside. So pee outside before you come in the clinic. It was hilarious. Right? Most people are going to go in and try to talk to a vet and they're not going to have any, um, any um, connection points. So again, it doesn't mean you shouldn't talk to those people or can't talk to those people. I would just say that if you keep it on the left-hand side of your paper, I think you're going to have a lot more fun. And you're right a lot easier time in having conversations. Does that make sense, you guys? Yes. Anybody else want Can to share? I pipe yeah, I just want to pipe in with David. He, uh, one thing that I thought is that, you know, there are plenty of older people uh, that can be mailbox power, not, not affiliates, but uh, maybe they'll be a, a light account that have grandchildren they can't, they don't want to go out and buy gifts. They could use our service to send them gift cards. And as far as the sci-fi business, Comic-Con is also a, a great source if you are into that. Exactly. Com Comic-Con, I mean, and, and by the way, there are Comic-Cons almost in every town. And the smaller the town, the scarier they are, which makes me smile because that's where I want to play. Yeah. Right? Hey, Casey. Yes, yeah, Carolyn. Jerry. I uh, just want to add the only exception I might make to um, not talking to someone that's outside your wheelhouse is that um, if I have friends who are realtors, I don't like real estate at all. But if I have friends who are realtors, I will talk to them in a heartbeat about it because I can say they trust me and I can say, you need to go join this group. You need to attend these trainings. They know what they're talking about. I don't, but you need the service. So yeah, and, and, that's and one I, exception. Yeah, no, I think there are many, many exceptions, Gerilyn. So that's a great point. I'm not saying don't talk to a realtor if you're not into real estate, okay? I'm just saying that if I'm talking to Gerilyn about dance, her face is beaming. She's much more in a state of willingness to have a conversation Versus if I'm not in real estate and I'm trying to talk to a real estate agent, they have a little bit of a guard up. And Geraldine right. hit it right on the head. There has to be a trust point, right? So if we've got a friend in between us or somebody's making that introduction, yeah, that's a trust point. Yeah, so it just I'm just trying to make it easier for you. Oh, right? absolutely. And I totally agree. It, so, And Gerilyn some... talks to dance studios, right? So here's the thing. So she talks to dance studios, right? Those are all business owners. Well, again, I am completely making this up because I have no idea what I'm talking about here. But here's what I can kind of gather that a dance studio owner might have a need to talk to. Um, insurance, hardwood flooring, mirrors, shoes, um, uh, sequins, makeup, hair, hair stuff to make their hair get pulled back. I don't know this to be oh, true, but my yeah. guess there are certain types of shoes that work better than others. There are probably certain, um, um, uh, she's probably gonna need dressing rooms. There's probably gonna need to be um, uh, hand soap in the bathrooms. There's all kinds of stuff that I could have conversations with about a dance studio with Gerilyn, even though I don't know a lot about dance, but she's got all these access points to all the vendors that her dance studio uses. And then when we start moving out there, we go, okay, what do those vendors need? Well, I'm guessing there aren't too many liability, dance studio liability insurance folks in the space, right? So now we can go talk to them. That's actually a group that I have set up. I have a vendor group in my account and I send them things on a regular basis so they know how this works too. How they wouldn't know how to what? How this works as well. So that they get cards, they see, oh my gosh, one of my, um, well, my landlord is also in the restaurant business. So he has a chain of franchises. It's just one thing leads to another. You just can't 
it's just those points of connection. It's just yeah. those points of connection. And if we start with people that we are in alignment with, right? Like, uh, like it's actually really funny to me. Um, I never really thought this, but then I started looking at it, kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, I produced a movie called Dean John Malkovich back in the 90s, right? I was a, one of the producers. And I had no idea the cult following and Facebook groups and camaraderie around people that have all these things about that movie, right? I went in and started answering questions just from a production side. And oh my gosh, like, it's crazy. One of my best friends in the world was the star of a movie called uh, Return of the Living Dead. Uh, so he was, he was an actor in the 80s and he did two really big, famous 1980s movies, uh, Lost, Last American Virgin and um, uh, Return of the Living Dead. He like has, like people have tattoos of him on their bodies, right? So he can go talk to those folks all about that and then layer in the conversation about mailbox power, right? So I wanted to just draw up kind of how I, um, how I present mailbox power to my groups on my left, right? Um, and this is just, it's just an opinion. It's just food for thought. Just might be an easier way, um, uh, to break open the conversation. And that is, um, that is to keep the conversation on a conceptual level. Okay. Um, and what I mean by conceptual level is I think sometimes we present mailbox power and I put that in quotation marks as we are going in and showing how the system works to somebody that has not bought into the why or the what it can do for their business or their life. So we're going in and there, we're giving them a tour and we're showing them how they can build a golf ball uh, sleeve or how they can build a swag box, right? Whereas if you will go in and you will talk to them about um, ideas that they can use in their business, it's huge, right? So for example, Mary Warren, Mary Warren works with a company called Posh, right? So Mary, take, a, take yourself off mute there for a sec if you can. Okay, okay. right. So, so here's how, if I'm talking to Mary about Posh. Now, I know that Posh is a direct sales network marketing company. They've got amazing products in their, in their ecosystem. Here's how my kind of conversation goes with Mary. So Mary, um, Gosh, you know, I know that, what do you call your consultants? Are they called consultants over there? Uh, influencers. Influencers. Okay, awesome. So Mary, um, influencers. I went to public school, so it takes me a minute to, to catch on, right? <laughs> so, I, I, so we're gonna help you grow your influencer base, Mary. So, so Mary, give me, give me just like a couple of products that are like your top selling products that all these um, all these folks have? Uh, BFF and Big Fat Yummy Hand Creams. Big Fat Yummy Hand Creams. And what was the other yeah. one, Mary? Uh, BF, BFF Face Wash. BFF Face Wash. Okay. Um, perfect. And Mary, for this posh business, do you do mostly parties or is it, um, is it you're doing one-on-one -on -one and um, some marketing stuff to have people join us? As mostly parties. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, what? Mostly parties. Okay. So she tells me she's got parties. This is all I need to go on in order to have a conversation with her. So I'm literally going to take out a piece of paper. I wouldn't normally use a giant whiteboard and make it all like, <laughs> like super training, right? But... I could go, um, Mary, if I buy the big fat yummy hand cream, um, if I get that to my house, how long is that roughly going to last me before I have to um, About two months. Two months. Okay. So 60 days. Okay. Awesome. And if I buy the BFF face wash and I use it every day, what's that going to, how long is that bottle going to last me? About the same. Okay. About the same. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And um, do you call the party hostesses hostesses? Yes. Okay. Okay. So 
Mary, so I just came up with a couple of really cool ideas that I think could really help you grow your posh business. Number one is that when somebody buys your big fat yummy hand cream, right? Remember that you're competing with Walgreens. That's so funny. I just had this conversation with Bonnie over the weekend, right? You're having this, um, this hand cream come out 60 days from now, you're competing with Walgreens and Costco, right? So what if we pre-set up when somebody buys one of these things, we've got a, a thank you card that goes out to them, thanking them, showing them how to use it, maybe indicating you're showing another couple of products that you have, but really just thanking that customer for ordering that big fat yummy hand cream. Oh, I'm combining all these things now. <laughs> the big fat yummy <laughs> hand cream. Um, but then Mary, what I'd like you to do is imagine if we had a system and a way to reach out to that customer 45 days from now, asking for the reorder. Okay, so mm -hmm. she buys a, Gerilyn buys us, they buy all kinds of stuff, but we only do this for the couple of top selling products. You buy the, the, the hand cream, boom. You got a two, two touch system that goes out, Mary. One of them is going to help you get reorders because it's going to land about two weeks before she needs another, another bottle of hand cream. Then we do the same thing with the face wash. And let's do the same thing 45 days, 45 days out. So now, Mary, somebody comes in and David buys some hand cream and a face wash. You trigger both of these things and you don't have to think about it anymore. This is how we put reorders on repeat, right? Because mm -hmm. now, 45 days, he's going to get a card for hand cream. 45 days later, or he's also going to get one for face wash. Sure. Don't get too caught up in concepts, Mary, but I want you to start thinking about how do we have somebody reorder from us? Because that's where your real money is. Then down here on the party hostess, we need to put all these hostesses in a group and keep them all segmented because we know we're going to give them treats. We're going to give them party supplies. We're going to help them grow their um, uh, hostess gifts. So now we've got a hostess thing. So we put these guys on a drip of at least one, uh, four times a year, just letting them know that, Hey, if you book another party with me, here's what's going to happen. We're going to give you 25 off 25 in hostess gifts or whatever. And I know because you had a party six months ago that your gifts are about to run out. And so let's replenish those free gifts that we send you by just having a, co a couple of girlfriends over and we'll have some wine and some cheese and we'll, we'll sit and chalk bath, uh, bath salts or not bath salts, but um, uh, uh, bath <laughs> bombs, bombs or whatever. <laughs> right. And then, hey, Mary, um, I know that you just had Nanette as a party guest, as a hostess, but how about on the next time, why don't we send her out a card that says, hey, we're going to send out invites to have, um, we're going to help you book your party if you'll create a little group. We'll create a picture of you and I on the front welcoming these guests, guests over. And I'm willing to invest 10 bucks to invite 25 people to your party. If you want to just give me their addresses, I'll send out that and I'll help get them, get them into the equation. You guys look what I just did. I just helped Mary spend a whole bunch of money building her posh business in like four lines. You'll notice what I didn't do. I didn't tell her we sold dog bowls. Yeah. I didn't tell her we have a document center. I didn't tell her we had certificates. I didn't even tell her we had mug. I didn't really tell her anything we had. I didn't get into the nitty gritty. I kept it as this is what's going to help her bring on more influencers or help her move up the ranks in that organization. Sure. Does that make sense? Yes. I really get this, how you're presenting this, like, I think this is what I have been trying to get my customers to understand and just didn't have the right kind of wording coming out of my mouth. So this is definitely helping me to realize how I can make that very clear to them. So I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing, Gabriella put it in here. I think we have an epidemic here in Mailbox Power. This is just my own, this is my own two cents. I think we have an epidemic in, in mailbox power that we all know what we do and we all get excited about all of it. And then we go out and we start talking to somebody. And if Nanette is talking to a missile defense contractor and that missile defense contractor is told that we sell dog bowls, that is that is the missile defense contractor and be like, what? What 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 are we talking about dog bowls for? <gasps> yeah, but you could put let me show you all this stuff about dog bowls, dog scarves and and golf balls and all kinds what that missile defense contractor hey you know what 
we know that you get RF, RFPs and we and you have requests from the government. And I know that you've got requirements that you can't send out big $10 gifts or $50 gifts. But a simple postcard just saying, hey, thanks for the business or thanks for thinking of us keeps us top of mind. So maybe in the off chance that we get an extra one or two days to turn in our proposals or our contract, or maybe we just have a simple way to, to reach out and say, thanks for letting us uh, send in our proposal. It's huge. Right. If I'm talking to somebody about Star Wars, you know, uh, I, like Brad Hunter, Vanessa's husband, the two things he's into are Star Wars and golf. Right. So for his birthday, I made a set of golf balls with each of the Star Wars characters on there. Um, uh, one was Darth Vader, one was R2-D2, and one was, I don't know what the heck it was, something. Right. Dude loved him. Right, because it was just combining. I so um, Chewbacca. What? Chewbacca. That, that's what it was. It was Chewy. <laughs> Nerd. I mean, Star. Welcome to the party. Right. Um, you guys, this is just we we got to have some fun with this thing, right? And I think if we start talking to people that we're having fun with, the conversation will flow easier. But if you can get to the point of talking about concepts. Right? So Star runs the drain company, right? She runs the drain company. She ta literally talks shit all day long, right? That's what they do, right? So, I, it, so, I mean, we got all kinds it's of problems. It's talking dirty. It's not talking shit. It's just talking dirty. Okay, cool. So she's, <laughs> right? But she, what if she sent out um, and, and we're going to franchise this business. So if you're interested in a drain company franchise, be able to connect with star should be able to help you. It's absolutely a phenomenal investment opportunity. I'll just be the pitch guy for it at this point. Um, but, but when I go in and I say, and I'm talking to a drain company, I'm like, star, here's the thing. We got to make sure that when someone's clog drain gets clogged or their pipe gets clogged or their water heater goes out or, um, their toilet gets clogged that they don't think of anybody but the drain company, right? So what if we took all our customers and created a neighborhood resource guide that we sent to all of our customers that had the um, Humane Society number on it, the um, local CDC, the local um, um, poison control center. We created this little resource card. I think Bruce did this last week, create a little resource card and said brought to you by the drain company. And we sent that out. Notice, by the way, I'm not talking dog scarves. Right? The phone soap, the thing that we just came out with, this is a cool thing. If Star had property managers, because Star's company works with HOAs and property managers and big things, well, look, here's what I know. Now, I happen to know Star. She's a friend of mine. She also is. Um, my house and our buildings, uh, they do all of our work in our building, right? So I do have a relationship with Star, so I know, I kind of know the problem. I'm not totally making this up, right? But um, think about if we said um, uh, Star, that phone soap thing, anybody that spends over $5,000 a year with you should get one of those phone soap things with your name on it that says, hey, you're out in the field getting dirty your phone shouldn't be, you know, something like that. Or, Hey, if you get done doing a job in the car, I'd say something like, if you're done, if you get your hands dirty all day long and you touch your car keys, that's kind of gross. Throw your car keys in this thing and let's clean them up. Right. Clean your pipes, clean your phone. Right. We can't come over and clean your pipe, but we can certainly help you keep your phone clean or keep your face clean or whatever. There's a ton of different, uh, ton of different things that we can do. Keep it fun and light, but show them or give them ideas how it's applicable to their business or their hobby. Right? I know that Star um, Star works with, is it Leukemia Society? I know there's a, you raise money for, is it leukemia? Yes. Leukemia lymphoma. Okay. Now, check this out. If I were a betting man, um, I would bet that the people that are in that ecosystem that donate money to that cause run businesses. 
we may not know that because the context that we're meeting them in is not business running. But I mean, I've been to a bowling tournament where Star drugged me. There, I mean, invited me there uh, to help raise money, and those people were a hoot. Right? We were talking about something super serious, but it was a hoot. Has this been helpful for you guys? Can I add something? Yeah, absolutely, Sandy. Well, I know um, not everybody's open, but they're getting there. Race directors. They're putting on 5Ks around here and they're planning for marathons maybe this summer or maybe not a marathon, but maybe half that. Absolutely. They use all those things to put it together. It was just gave me an idea. Absolutely. And Sandy, do you know where the race organizers actually make their money? On the, uh, usually it's on the, on the, on the bottles and the giveaways and the sponsorships. It's oh, sponsorship. sponsorship. Okay. It's all the booths and the, the Nestle that comes and gives the water to the racers and the, and the Nikes that, the Nikes that, um, you know, sponsor those events. So what a really cool way to connect up with race directors say, oh my gosh, um, you want to attract better sponsors? Let's make them look like a rock star. So I would actually come tell the race director, hey, go take photos of all of the sponsor booths and let's send them a card or a gigagram afterwards, um, just showing where their money went to good use. Mm -hmm. It's huge. If you work with seniors or you like folks that are working with seniors, um, I would do everything in a gigagram. And if you want to stand out from the crowd, make the font bigger. So folks like me who can't um, see really well can actually read the damn font on the card and feel like an independent adult would not need my glasses. <laughs> right? Great point, Sandy. I love that. Race directors. Now, again, on my right-hand side is anything related to exercise and or running. I don't want to. I don't understand why I would run from here for five miles down the road when I can get in my car that I don't know how it works and just drive the damn thing. Oh, I'm talking about running, walking. <laughs> I like well, to now walk. You, now, that's more my speed. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I'm usually the last one, but I don't care. <laughs> they, they can't let the ambulance leave without me. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So you guys, look, I just wanted to come on tonight and really talk about Lightening the load of the burden where we all think we have to be all serious all the time about all these businesses. Sometimes it's okay to let our hair down a little bit about and talk about some fun stuff with people that care about the same kind of fun stuff. And they're not going to be sold everything under the sun. They're not going to have heard about mailbox power by every other person on the planet. Let those guys go talk to them about what they're good at. Sandy and I are going to go talk about political legislation writers. Was this helpful for you guys? I just want to, let me see. Let me just see. Uh, uh, can bear, oh, we got some jazz hands going. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, you guys. Hey, I am going to drop this video in um, in the YouTube channel as soon as we're done. So if you want to get weekly reminders about this call, very simple, just go to legendcallreminders.com. Just put your name and email address in there and I will, uh, I will, um, uh, I'll send you an email every week. It's just a templated email just to remind you on the call. And if you would like, um, um, if you would like to watch this or send this to somebody, um, this will be up on a private unlisted YouTube playlist um, at pastlegendscalls.com. Okay, it'll just take you right there. All of the past calls, well, the last, since we started it, uh, since we started putting them on the YouTube channel, will all be there. And uh, I'll post it in the Facebook group as well. So any final thoughts? Okay, cool -y -o. You guys have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. For those of you that are in Colorado, um, get warm tonight. Make sure your heaters work. Um, I'm going to go out and, and enjoy the nice, salty Malibu breeze. It's just gently rate coming over the valley here in the 80-degree weather. So uh, anyways, you guys, please be safe, especially for those of you that are in um, some colder weather when there's ice on the road. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty please be careful. 
Um, I would hate to see anybody slip and fall or, or get in a car accident or anything. So, okay. Awesome, you guys. Have a great night. We will see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on legendsdaily.live, which is our wake-up call with Joe Kenmore, our fantastic CEO. So with that, you guys, have a great night. I'll see you later. Ciao for now. Bye.